Good afternoon, everyone. Very happy to be here. Definitely a dress up for the occasion, I guess. Uh, um, it's uh, such a pleasure to be here, especially at this time. And what we want to talk about it is the 5G future we have ahead of us. Also, it's great to see many of, not partners, not colleagues, but like brothers in arms that we've been on this race building uh, this technology that we actually could launch it right now, uh, this year, you know, and it been launching within this quarter in a number of different places. So 2019 is the year of 5G. 5G is here. Uh, we don't have to wait for it anymore. And we see now one thing that is very different than happened in the past. Uh, the importance of this technology is such that has been launching in many geographies across the world. And, you know, it's, it's good to get to this point and remember, uh, you know, when we talk about this exactly by mid-2017, and companies like Qualcomm, Ericsson, and operators across the United States, Korea, Japan, uh, we made a decision that we could accelerate this technology because the mobile industry and many other industries will need 5G. And we accelerated by one full year. Later, we got joined by 45 other companies. And I think the result of this hard work of the cellular industry, and the cellular industry should be very proud of it, is that we're actually launching 5G one year ahead of a schedule in many locations. No question, the United States is leading in 5G. Um, and we have a lot of opportunities because this is an ongoing technology uh, you know, development and we expect we're gonna have a lot of innovation in 5G faster than we've seen within 4G. And this, it's a, it's a piece of data that is very encouraging. And despite the skepticism, uh, we believe that the 5G transition will be faster than what happened in 4G. And I wanted to put a comparison. If we go back exactly 10 years, 10 years ago, we were in 2009 launching 4G. At the time, we had only four operators, Verizon Wireless in the United States and the three operators in Korea, SKT, KT, and U+. We had only three devices, HTC, Samsung, and LG. Now you look, and by the way, at that time, uh, we also had the discussion about, you know, the maturity of the technology. There was a lot of analysts on their Blackberries sending messages to each other saying, who needs this? There's no use case, right? And, and now we look at the smartphone society we have and, and how much 4G caused a revolution. And I think 5G will be no different. But there is the fact that we live in a mature smartphone and connected society. And now you have this situation that we can see with a little bit more precision the opportunities that, of transformative opportunities that we can deliver with 5G. And now we do a comparison. Here's where we are right now in exact the same time frame uh, that we're launching 5G in comparison with 4G. We have now over 20 operators, precisely 22 operators. There are 60 markets that this has been launched. We have over 20 OEMs building products, 30 products uh, announced and launching in 2019 of those 28 are flagship smartphones. And there is no question when you make a comparison that the scale and the traction of 5G it's much, much bigger than what we saw in other transitions of wireless, and we expect that to see a much faster transition. And of course, we're very excited about that and the ability to build an ecosystem around 5G. And I wanna just, in this whole discussion that we've seen today, it seems like a common topic. Um, if we go back to MWC 2019, just a few months ago, uh, we had a number of devices that got announced. And I think we saw, you know, our great partner Samsung showing the Galaxy S10 5G. And unlike the other generations, unlike 2G, 3G, and 4G, this is the first time, because of the acceleration, that the devices are ready ahead of the network. There's a whole device ecosystem now 
ready, waiting for the network to be up and consumers will be able to experience. As a consequence of that, China timeline change. China that was launching in the third quarter in the September timeframe accelerated to May and now is launching next month in uh, May 17. And I think it's because of the maturity of the technology and, and the device ecosystem that we could build with many of our partners. And we're definitely excited about that. It's another sign, I think, I think how well we're all doing as an industry in 5G and the opportunities that we have for the United States, for the companies here, but also the companies throughout the world. As we move on, we have this uh, celebration that we have in, in MWC, and I could not resist. I had to bring uh, this uh, for this presentation. You know, especially for a company that have been, you know, attacked for our business model of licensing technology, as you know, we've been attacked for a very small and weak company that is attacking Qualcomm. And, and if you look what happened is when we set up with our partners to accelerate 5G, not only will we be able to get the technology ready by one year ahead of schedule, but we could bring every other company of the ecosystem with us. They're focused on bringing 5G to the market. Every, every operator that is driving 5G, every infrastructure you know, vendor, ever handset manufacturer, with few exceptions, uh, were part of building this 5G ecosystem and celebrated at MWC that we could get it done and launch on Q2 of 19, you know, as we had set ourselves to do. And I think that showed the power of the seller in industry, the power of the standards, the global standards, they're part of the cellular industry and how companies can cooperate to create technology, innovate and share so we can build systems that go not only within the cellular industry but beyond for the other industries. And I want to sp sp stop here and spend a little bit of time talking about what we can do with this technology, especially looking at the device side and of course uh, there are going to be opportunities for the other players, especially the operators. One of the goals of this technology, when it was being developed and designed, it was to meet the needs of smartphone users that we now live into a unlimited data, unlimited speeds, 100% connection with the cloud. And it is a mature smartphone society, as I mentioned, and 5G needs to deliver the economics for both the operator and the user for unlimited data. It needs to deliver wireless fiber, gigabit speeds, and allow you to leverage the cloud for storage, uh, but for connectivity, but for computing. And we're going to create now new use cases that we didn't have before. And it was easy to think about, you know, you have a pretty good 4G today and you have a pretty good smartphone and you say, you know, I, I can do mostly everything I want based on the applications today. But the potential on 5G, even for consumers, before we go to the industrial cases, is to create opportunities that you can do much more. And that is done by basically uh, unifying the phone with the potential of the cloud by making them both connected and connected with reliability. And what you'll be able to do is you're gonna have not, not only unlimited uh, data and unlimited storage, not worrying about the amount of data and where your data resides, but most importantly, you're gonna have on-demand computing. Recently, Google announced an online gaming platform uh, called Stadia. And that could not be a better example of the future of gaming with 5G. Basically, you can run any workload. You can run any workload, no matter how heavy it is, a PC game, you can run on the edge cloud, connect it to 5G and low latency, and that's gonna be the future of gaming. The cloud is the new console. The mobile, the mobile size of the mobile ecosystem is an order of magnitude larger than the gaming ecosystems. And that's the same thing we've seen happen with music and we're gonna see also with video. 4K video is gonna be as easy in 5G as we think about music streaming. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. Every 4G user with a high quality, hopefully Snapdragon device will be a 4K broadcaster, you know, in stadiums and sporting events. That will be very interesting. But we have a lot of opportunities. And the fact that you have unlimited computing, on-demand computing, 
we're going to democratize computing one more time, changing the enterprise, changing you know, the consumer use cases, and creating new type of devices. It's not a coincidence that we're starting to see larger screens with foldable technology, because as you're going to have those capabilities, you want to have a larger screen. But that's what we're going to see across the devices. We're going to see in the enterprise. But then we have this whole other area of 5G which is it's also being designed, as I mentioned, to meet the demands of the users, but also to replace every other purpose-built wireless network out there by bringing the scale of mobile. And that's why we have now those use cases across a number of industries. And then it sounds, it sounds cliche, but uh, it, it is the first time that the telecommunication industry, we had that before with the telephone and voice, but the telecommunication wireless industry is bringing a general purpose technology to the society. Um, we have had this in Qualcomm discussions with many new partners from new industries talking about manufacturing, the future of manufacturing, the supply chains on the move, uh, what used to be large-scale manufacturing uh, as a competitive advantage is now giving you know, uh, space to smaller scale, fast, shorter product cycles, you know, using new technologies such as cloud-connected machines and reconfigurable uh, you know, manufacturing space. We also see changes in healthcare. We see changes in the smart cities. We see fundamental changes in the automotive. And as another example, which I'll bring that in the later part of my presentation, when we talk to companies from the power and energy industry, they see huge opportunities of connecting the power grid with 5G. So we have a lot of opportunities and 5G will be the difference between how competitive those companies and those industries are going to be going into the future, and what are the new business models and new companies that can be created. And I think that tells, I think as many of our colleagues said during the day, our job's not done, we just started this transition, and I think we have to continue working, especially in the United States, continue to drive technology innovation, and basically build uh, on top of this 5G launch on the full potential of this technology. And I wanna basically, uh, uh, get to the end of the presentation, I know I'm out of time, talking about an example of how important is the standard process uh, to continue to standardize 5G. We have a lot of new features and capabilities coming from the release 15 that we're launching to release 16. And, and as we developed those new capabilities and with the same pace and will of being first, uh, will be able to bring the benefit to all those other industries and use cases. And I'll leave you with one thought. I know we talk a lot about spectrum. And, uh, and I have to say, we need more spectrum. So absolutely, we need more spectrum. But also, I want to also to leave you with this thought. That's why this is a highly debated topic. When you look, oh, we live in a connected world. And we used to joke to say, resistance is futile. Everything's gonna be connected. Uh, and we are, you know, we're connected by, by definition and, and the scale of connectivity continue to increase. So when you look at the surface area that we have when you started with the internet and you have some connected PCs, now you look at where we are with smartphone, with about getting close to 60% of the world population having a smartphone. And then we think about now making 5G critical infrastructure that will connect everything else. The surface area uh, for cyber attacks is much bigger. And it's bigger uh, from an exponential uh, you know, uh, perspective, and also bring now mission critical services because 5G will be critical infrastructure. So we collectively, as an industry, need to continue to raise the bar on the technologies we developed to ensure security of this connected world. Uh, the task continues to increase and it's about securing everything. It's about a secure network, a secure device, a secure processor, secure OS, secure application, etc. So in addition to Spectrum, I think we have uh, more work to do in the area. And thank you very much uh, for your time and for allowing me to speak at CTIA today. Thank you, much appreciated. <laughs>